Most newer machines have a chart like this for settings on the inside of the wire feeder cabinet. I'm using 030 wire today. That's, that's the two pound spool that came with the machine. And the settings are 20.9 volts, 456 inches a minute for quarter inch thick material. Or I can just use this auto setting. And all I have to do there is select the thickness and it puts those settings from the chart right onto the panel. Or I can just go manual by turning the auto set off. Some machines, the auto settings aren't very good, but this one I found to be really close. So that's what I'm going to do today for the most part, is use the auto set function. Set it for a quarter inch. I'm going to do this little T-joint fillet weld here. Push versus pull. I mean, what MIG welding video shouldn't have a push versus pull discussion? Camera angle is deceiving, but this is actually about a five degree push. Using a nice short stick out. Everything's going in there pretty well. If your settings are close and you use a short stick out and you stay up on the front or the leading edge of the puddle, things usually go a lot better. I'm just using a very slight little hitch and pause type motion here. That's just kind of a habit. All right, that one's done. We'll let it cool off completely. Otherwise, the results will be skewed. And then we'll do a pull on the other side. Again, not getting too carried away with the pull angle and still using a short stick out of around three eighths of an inch. And I'm still using just a little bit of a hitch and pause type thing. Actually, I'm doing more of a side-to-side -side motion here, but not much. Not much motion at all. The main reason is it just kind of gives me a little increment, a little way to have my travel speed go even. And it plays the light a little bit for me and helps me see everything a little bit better. All right, the pull's done. Now, let it cool completely. The pull section do one cut and etch in the middle here. I polished it with a brown scotch bright followed by a red scotch bright Rolox disc. And then i have used a little bit of etch that basically is a passivation solution for stainless steel. But that just happens to be what I have on hand. And you can see right there, there's some slight minor differences, but not like night and day. We'll do a little hash mark here so you can see exactly where the penetration is and where the weld nugget is. So both of them got in there. There's minor differences. Now we're going to do a little vertical uphill. Now those hot settings that I just used that are recommended here on the chart or on the auto set, those are recommended for flat and horizontal. And they're good and hot for flat and horizontal. They're a little hard to handle going uphill. Before we do that, though, I want to just take a quick look here. I think some, some of this stuff is worth mentioning. It's got a really nice wire feeder assembly here. And this is a kind of a unique design on the uh, drive rollers here. Pretty easy to change from 025 to 030 to 035, and there's also a, a little knurled roller there. Just thought that was worth showing. Once again, the settings, 20.9 volts, 456 inches a minute. And again, I can just dial it in here by just selecting quarter inch. We're going to see what happens here on this quarter inch vertical joint here. And uh, spoiler alert, it ain't going to be pretty. Right away, right there, a, a big ball fell on my boot. You know, and, and I had to stop for just a second. It looks good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and weld this thing all the way out. And we all know what's going to happen in those hot settings. No matter what kind of technique you use, side to side, upside down V, triangles, you know, whipping in and out of the puddle, it's just, it's just hot. And so th if this were dual shield flux core, I could just go straight up, not even weave, not move at all, and just go straight up without any kind of technique, and it would be fine. But there's no flux here to help cool the puddle off and it just is tremendously hot and it's sagging out and drooping and I know that any minute now it's going to fall out. Boom. And there we go. I have created artwork. Now halfway through that thing it looked like it was going to blow a hole all the way through and then it just dripped out at the end. It makes it look like a big a big long nose on a something totem pole or something like that but it was hot. So for vertical uphill instead of Turning the auto set off, I'm just dropping down to the settings for 1 8 17.7. Actually, I tweaked it up 0.2 volts. I found that worked a little bit better, but 17.7 worked pretty good too. And I'm going to be using this type of a technique. This is just one of many that I like to use for uphill short circuit mid fillet wells. A series of triangles kind of tracing the front of the puddle. If you think about tracing the front of the puddle, that's what it does basically. It's sort of a teardrop shape. And it keeps the wire in the leading edge of the puddle. And that's where the business end is. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you get your penetration. If you hang back too far in the puddle, you have problems with short circuit mid. Again, a nice short stick out 
will always help things go better. Let's take a look at that. Now it looks pretty decent for vertical uphill, but we're gonna we are gonna cut and etch it and see exactly how much penetration we got. But I find it helpful to do that right after watching the arc, and I want to slow the arc down here about half speed. And just watch the technique again. Come straight across and then come right up into the front edge of the puddle with a short stick out with a series of triangles. That's what I have in my mind's eye anyway, a series of triangles. It might be more like a teardrop shape. But either way, I'm whipping across the middle pretty quick and, and moving it up in increments to keep the arc in the front of the puddle. All right, a quick swab etch here. And other than a, a rough shear cut and a little bit of a bad fit up there, you can see it punched in there pretty far past the intersection where the root is. Got a little convexity, definitely. You always have that on vertical uphill. But main thing is, it got in there and it was, it was controllable. I also did one where I just bumped the setting down one thickness. And it actually was okay too, just a little bit more, a more of a crown, more convexity. If you could stand that, you might just want to do that. I tried the same thing on vertical uphill on 1 8 inch thick steel, which I normally wouldn't do, but I just wanted to see if it would work. So I bumped the settings down to uh, the auto set settings down to 16 gauge. And again, I, I tweaked the voltage up just a tad, seemed to smooth things out a bit. And ran some passes on 1 8 inch thick steel, a double pass weld. This is the second one. Nice smooth arc, easily, easy to control the puddle. Obviously, this is way more well than you need on eighth inch material, but I honestly think this could be a way of schools controlling their budget by just starting off with eighth inch. So instead of using quarter inch for this same training exercise, you could save half the money just starting off on eighth of an inch and then getting the technique down and then going to quarter inch just to learn the hotter settings.